the Holy Spirit will help me and you not to miss the core message that is bringing along my way and your way this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I go into this scripture, I want to say something. I'll go into the scripture, then I'll come back to that story as we pray. A few years ago, in our country, Nigeria, we had a naval chief of staff, chief of naval staff, who was on his way to work early in the morning. And as he was passing along his route that he had to take to his work, he saw a crowd gather, a pocket of crowd with exclamations. Somehow, something restrained him to slow down. As he did, he spotted a little package, a carton. People were looking inside. Somehow, not his usual habit, but he stopped his driver. His entourage. You know, in our nation, so in our nation, when we say the chief of naval staff is moving, it's an entourage, quite an entourage. And still is in our present day. He stopped, he came down from his leg. He alighted, he went over and he saw inside that dirty makeshift cattle was a baby abandoned by the mother. Still very fresh. Blood was still all over. He didn't even know what sex of the baby. Suddenly, the fatherhood spirit in him kicked up. He became restless. He had his own children. So he took that child to a, not to, to, to a motherless home and told them, take care of this child. Whatever the child needs, this etc. Gave them money. But after some time, something kept talking at his heart. He went back to that motherless home and asked whether he can adopt that child according to the story I had. To cut a long story short, this chief of naval staff Chief of Navy was granted the papers, everything, the rights to adopt this child. Happened to be a baby girl, he adopted this child. Trained the child, sent the child to school, his own children, he gave them the best of everything. Gave them anything they needed. But from time to time, these children he wants to trade them one way or the other. There is this conflict of interest at all. Possibly between Madame and Oga. But this particular child became so brilliant. Whether public school or not, this child was so brilliant. Came out with top grades all the time. This child turned out to be an engineer and got married to a very, very wealthy friend. And she herself became very wealthy. As our brother, the chief of Navasa, was getting older, I learned that many of his children became so entitled, they don't even care about the welfare of their dad. They never bothered. So whatever shouldn't cause problems, what they will be striving with on a daily basis. But this particular child became so outstanding. Long story short, it was this child that God now used as the instrument of help in the latter days of our brother to take care of him, build him a fortress, get him nurses, make sure his welfare was top notch. What if this man had not stopped that day to rescue that child? What if he had not stopped? He would have shown the instrument of his help in his latter days when he would be weak, when he's tired and old, and it would have been disastrous for him. In our present society, the aged people are not kind to them the way they should. We're so impatient, we talk to many anyhow, forgetting that some of us too, many of us, 
Our faith, if we don't die young, we are going to grow old one day. It's taught. This brings something to my spirit. And I want to share a scripture with us. And I'm going to come back to this story. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 32, the whole of chapter 15 was devoted to the rebellion of Absalom, who dethroned his father, King David. King David was not an ordinary king in the hand of God, before the presence of God. God spoke about David, he even boasted about him. He said, I found David, whom I have anointed with my holy, holy oil. Is as the apple of my eyes. God does not joke when it comes to the dynasty of David. David, God even posted to David. He said, There shall never lack a man that will sit upon the throne of David. It was that blessing, that prophetic utterance from the mouth of the Creator itself that came highlighted and flushed, came down, you know, poured down upon our Lord Jesus Christ. So, as a result of past errors that caught up with him, David was dethroned. And as he was dethroned, the son took over. That's not where I'm going. There was a man who was supposed to be, who was, who was a vassal of the king. I will not say call him a royal vassal. When we say somebody is loyal, or he was a royal vassal, but no, he was not loyal. To be royal does not mean somebody is loyal. Royalty is different from loyalty. This man was called Ahithophel. Ahithophel was a royal vassal among the top-notch chiefs that was behind King David. David trusted him so much, so deeply, he never believed in, in the case of anything that Ahithophel would be the one to turn his back or to betray him. But when Absalom Rebelled and took the throne and dethroned his father. Ahithophel felt it was the perfect time to bring out his plan, his, plan, his anger of vengeance upon King David. Because Ahithophel happened to be a parent to the wife of uh, 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 Uriah. Who was murdered by King David? So he took side with the son of David that was Absalom. So he was a royal vassal of the king, but he was not loyal. He forgot that God at times, even though that God will use to bring out your glory, may necessarily not be people that you like. In fact, help can come to you packaged in need of help from you. Yet, it may be the help that will set your life forever. Ahithophel forgot that inside glory is where God has kept another glory. Maybe you don't understand. Every glory in life is hidden inside another glory. The glory of children are hidden for a time inside their parents. At the appropriate time, they begin to get bigger and then they grow and they become bigger and better than their parents. But if their parents were not there, their glory may not have manifested and become perfected the way it should be in some cases. Except God intervened, you will agree with me. In our land, in Karo Chilela, they say, Nimu go, Lafi o go, Pamosi, Nimu go, no go wa. O go ka o da duro li. Be ba u go doktan, Nimu o go no ti wa. Any time you see a shining glory, it emanated from another glory. The glory of Jesus had to begin to shine from the glory of John the Baptist. The Bible says he was a forerunner of Jesus. He said, ah, the one that is coming, even though hey, he may have to come after me, 
His trueness I cannot hide. That in fact is going to be greater than me. Whenever I see children rebel against their parents, it makes me sad. To be in grace inside glory. When you rebel against your parents, you are dictating, you are drawing down, you are planning how your life will be tomorrow. When I see young women, when they marry from a family and they maltreat their in laws, the father or the mother in law, and you too, you have children for that family, hey, I pity you. Because tomorrow, the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given back unto you. In which way? A good measure. It will even be shaken down. Shake it together. Press down. If only a hint of it did not give it, it did not give it to flesh. If only it was not chaperoned, it was not motivated by anger and thank yous and spirit of unforgiveness. If he had recognized that it was inside glory, a glory that glory emanates from, shine from, appear from, how would the end of the days of Ahitophel would have been in, I mean, on serving on that King David? In his blind rage, in his blind, vengeful rage, he threw caution to the wind. He sided with a rebel. No rebel escaped the sword. There is a destiny for rebels. A time will come, they are always devoured by the sword. You know the end of Absalom. That's not where I'm going. But let me read this scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 15 from verse 32. I'm going to stop. Not verse 32, from verse 30. Second Samuel chapter 15 from verse 30 to 31. And David went up to the ascent of Mount Olivet. Every time there is a challenge, go up. Go up to the mountain. But when he went to the mountain in shame, whenever you go to the mountain in shame, you will come back carrying glory. Nobody behold the face of the king and remain the same. Psalm 84 verse 7. Psalm 84 verse 7 says, they go from strength to strength. Each one that appears before God is Zion. Let me go back to that scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 30. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet. Do not remain at the level of your detractors. Go up. Backbiters, a minister of God's hand, they are always at the back. Don't say at their level. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and he had his head covered. That signifies shame. I speak to somebody listening to me somewhere. Whatever has made your head to be bowed in shame, God will lift it up for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, and he went barefoot. Why did the Bible take time to record this? He went barefooted. Crown has been removed from his head. Royal shoe has been removed from his leg. What makes men to recognize the king is by the things the attire is putting on, the shoe on his leg, the royal shoe, and the crown upon his head. David has been derobed of all these things. They've been removed. To walk barefooted is a shameful thing for a royalty. They will say the air must not ride or must not walk upon the floor. It must ride on us back. But here was David, a king loved by God. And all this happened. And all the people that was with him covered every man his head. And they went up weeping as they went. These people did not go down. They were going up. Doing what? They went up weeping. 
when you go up to the king of glory, to the king of kings, the Bible says in Psalm 126, Psalm 126, the day that go out, sowing precious seed, they will come back home, gathering sheds, Psalm 126, with them. Verse 31, the Bible says, I want to hold David saying, how he so fair is among the conspirators with Absalom, your son. And David said, no matter how much in the time of your pain, be very, very careful about what you utter. If enemy is fighting you, don't be afraid. Speak. Go here. And David said, O oh Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. From that moment on, the destiny and the glory of Ahithophel entered into the world. I speak to somebody listening to me. Oh, go around the woman. Amen. Ah! Every error you may have made, error of judgment, maybe out of greed, out of carelessness, out of maybe being arrogant or rude to those that you ought to have bowed down to, to respect and be able to climb the ladder of success from there, that has made your head to be bowed in shame and you walking barefooted, even instead of being a royalty, right on us back. I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus that every of such things that may have told things against you, may the Lord restore you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything that may make you to make everything turn against you, as you open your mouth to decree, I say amen as I pray for you, I decree that all those things will turn around for your good. Amen. You will have testimonies. Amen. Your mockers will be your celebrants. They will be your celebrants. The one who celebrates you. Those who are laughing at you will laugh with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shame turned into glory. Reproach turned into fame for David. But that is not where I'm going. Where I'm going. And he took fame from that moment. That world was born. I told them was never the same. Children, don't allow your parents to speak in anger to you. Don't join the modern trend and speak to your parents anyhow. The Western program may be, some may be good, not all. Some of them, they have thrown their cultures to the wind and their children are killing them on daily basis. Don't copy it and rail and begin to rail and, and, and begin to just don't talk to your parents anyhow. If somebody is your boss, your head, don't talk anyhow. Don't insult your pastor. Your guardian, don't be rude. From the day I eat so fair, turned against David. From the day Absalom rebelled against David in 2 Samuel 15. His destiny has entered into coma. I Absalom died quickly. He was last to death with spears or an arrows, but a hit of him suffered. He suffered reproach and took his own life. Sometimes the one that you feel you are helping may actually be the one that will come back and help you later. When Absalom did what he did, if Ahitophel had run to the rescue of David and said, Hey, what are you doing? This is your father who forgave you. Those things would have spoken for him in the later years. But some of us, we are only guided by what we want to eat. That's what has been killing Africa, killing Nigeria, my nation, and many parts of the world. Forget about the bosses of so many Western world. Many of them have more corruption put together. The, all the corruption of their countries, if you put all Africans together, it's not up to one corruption of one Western nation. But they cover it. They use propaganda. And still make us feel dirty. That's not what I'm trying to say. Somebody, your help that will sustain you for life may come round. Camouflage. 
in a way that, that would look as if you are the one that needs to help the person. That is the reason why if you see a bad parent, in most cases, except God intervened, their children turn out to be useless. When you see children turn out well, and that child is boasting, if you are there, tell that child, shut up! Your parents played their part. I want to say this to every parent looking at me out there. Your labors will never be vain. Every toil over your children, in training, finances, morally, praying with them, spiritually guiding them. Ah, God, in the days when you are old and you are not as active as you used to be, God will raise help us for you. Amen. You will never be alone. You thought you raised your own children, but you have raised the child of God. God said in Matthew 25 from verse 31, he said, I will say to you, when you have not done it to one of these, you have not done it to me. But when you have done it to one of these, you have done it unto me. Matthew 25. So I'm saying to you, I eat of hell by carelessness, by selfish desire. He lost his glory. He lost his faith. He lost his position. He lost his wealth. Everything ended. He ended up in shame. Pride. Devil used it in his life to finish him. Let me go back to the story of the erstwhile Navachi. He thought, as at the time he helped this late young girl, baby, there was nothing in that baby that he can ever think of that can be of help to him in the future. This was a settled man. Money, everything. But a time can come. Money. The Bible says, well, they have wings. They can fly away. You raise your children, you do this, you do that. Depending on the choice of school you want them to go to. Anything can happen. But a time came when he needed help in his life. When those who look, he looked up to failed him. Those he spent his life, he felt he really, really, you know, he sweated upon and expended wealth when they failed him. It was this young lady that became an instrument of help to him. Who came wrapped in a helpless baby inside a rotting, dirty, smelly cattle that he just removed little money he could afford 1,000 times over and gave them at the orphanage to take care of this baby. And later, the Spirit of God led him. He took back the baby. The wife helped him, agreed, and they raised that girl. That girl became their saving light in the, in the wee hours, years of their lives. Let us pray. Parents that are looking at me, please, God will help me to raise your children well. Tomorrow, they may be children today. Tomorrow, they may be the one to be buying you the latest designs. Even though you may be wealthy. Say, Daddy, save your money. There's a latest car. Don't worry. Latest this. SUV, motor. No, 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 no. You're going to be you're going to be on this flight. You're not going to be on the business car. You're going to be executive. Tomorrow, they may be babies today. Every elder that you see was once a baby wrapped in the shawl. Every elder, every youth you see today, vibrant, exuding, exuding strength, you know, rippling muscles, they were once wrapped inside the baby. They will be put upon the shoulder of their daddies, you know, and then daddy there, with their bum bum little bit and they sleep. I remember my babies, my first child, he used to carry her in a carrier, go to watch football. I remember the second, the third and the last. I can't carry any one of them. If I do, I will lose my vertebra, my spinal cord. I will pray for you. Will you play your part tomorrow? God will rearrange that part. And when it will be replayed, it may be in a way that you never, never imagine. Never despise the ones that God has put your glory inside theirs. Never despise them. Because if you do, Inside your own glory, there is a glow, there are glories hidden. If you despise the ones used for you, the ones inside you will despise you too. There's a proverb in my language that says, He that bends down 
looking at the nakedness of another. As he bent down, his bum bum is up. Somebody else is watching his own nakedness. Friends, inside glory is giving another glory. Inside hell is giving a bigger hell. And he doesn't despise the glory that she was supposed to be a share for his own. He read it to him before time. Children, youths, look at me very well. Inside glory is another glory. Inside help is a bigger help. Beware. Watch what you do. This saga going on. Russia is showing flexing muscles. As a matter of fact, it's going to turn. Time will turn. It's going to suffer seriously for this thing he has done because the blood of the innocent will cry. But what I'm trying to say is that some have been outstanding there, Nigerians. And I talk my heart for all of you. There in Ukraine, everywhere, in Poland, anywhere you are. Some took time to save other students. Some took time to help or to help help other, other students into neighboring countries, giving them shelters. Jesus says, the one who gives welfare to another will never lack in any way. I want to pray for you. The Bible said, David was weeping. He was stripped of everything. Whereas he left his palace, David lost everything. When war came from within, I don't know the battle that is fighting from within. A song in Karajiri language. Her name is Sumi Arabaye. She sang, she said, Bobo Guntomi Jami Labenu. Bobo Guntomi Jami Ni Koko. Edubare Dobi Neke Bobo. Koto Di Wibe. Mo Bani Nayeja. Oni Bobo Guntomi Jami Labenu. Bobo Guntomi Jami Ni Koko. Every battle that is fighting me from within, that is fighting me in secret, I can't even say. Say, God, thou creator of all, say, take me above them all before they destroy my life. The Bible said, in the time of that battle, David was divested of all. Everything was taken from him. He went up. He went up. His head covered in shame, it does not matter. He went up. The Bible said he was walking barefoot. There was nothing to make people to recognize this is a king. He went up. The fact that you face challenge does not mean the authority of your mouth has been removed. In that said, he spoke, and it was taken. His glory went to the grave. Darkness and below his glory. I speak. Somebody listening to me, everyone sponsoring battles from darkness to divest you of your glory, of your wealth. As long as you have done good and not evil to them, I decree that as the glory of Aitofel enter the crowd in the afternoon of his life, let their glory enter the crowd in the name of Jesus. Amen. Here, listen to me, child of God. Every battle raging from within. May God give you grace. May God give you victory to overcome them all in Jesus' name. Amen. And every battle that has made you to walk their foot and has made you to be to your head to be to be to be divested of the crown of your of your of your inheritance and crown. May the Lord Almighty take up your case. Amen. As he took up the case of David. And restore you multifold Amen. than what was taken from me in Jesus' name. Amen. Shame will not be your portion. Amen. You will not run the altar skelter. This year, what men shall call me and you and say congratulations. Amen. We will move from glory to glory. Amen. We belong to the to a, to a king that has authority. And because we are heirs, joint heirs with the son, with the son. We hereby carry the authority to give command. 
I hereby issue command that everything, every confederacy of darkness that join together to make a mess of my destiny and your destiny to rubbish your glory in the name of Jesus. Enter the ground. In the land of Bemoni. In the land of Bemoni. In the land of Bemoni. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. If you have not given your life to Christ, there is crisis out there. In the midst of the problem now in Ukraine, God is sorting out His own. An invitation to Christ is not an invitation to religion. It's an invitation to relationship. Whenever you are, if you are not given that Christ, put your hand on your chest and pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Have mercy upon my soul. Forgive me my sins. Be my master, my Lord. I'm my Savior. Write my name in your book of life. I hand over to you the reins of my life. Come into my life. I want to be born again. Take over my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have prayed that prayer, my friend, send us testimonies. Send us your videos. Call us. We'll respond. And we'll give direction as we are led by the Holy Spirit. And as the Lord lives, we want to know that no matter what anybody tells you, no matter how God they tell you that they love you, I want to know that Jesus loves you more. We love you very much, but God loves you more. And it can never be over until you win. If you have no more, wait for it. It's coming. It can never be over until you win. Till I see you next time, I want to know that I love you very much. God bless you. Thank you for always being there. Bye-bye. See you next time.